नेक्स्ट आई वांट डिस्कस ऑन द इंटरव्यू पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू ओके सो डू वी हैंडल दिस सी बस क्लियरिंग इंटरव्यू एंड गेटिंग द जॉब इज द मोस्ट इजीएस्ट थिंग Can we use BODS instead of DB? Correct? No. If we use BODS, how will that get read? No. Because how will that read again during reporting? No. Okay. <clears throat> Now, so how do we handle the interviews? Now, so preferably, I'm looking at say there are some people who are say BW with and they got project and experience along with that. and you have some people with bo and some hana experience so without bw okay so there could be case this way there could be some case this way or this, there could be some case just as hana anyway right good so if you're a bw consultant huh, you want to project more on bw with hana knowledge you would project as if you worked on uh db migration the focus would be on db migration and modeling composite providers and advanced dso don't see work done uh, just say you have knowledge on advanced dso So this is what you will have to project. And if they ask you work done of anything B O, can just project on design story. This is what you have to project if you are from B W background and you want to project this this way. Yeah. B O on Hana and then normal Hana. So then you would say this way. Project on modeling, and then modeling data provisioning, reporting. If you are comfortable with the HANA native development video, what I've given, you can refer as over data services and some part of SAP UI file. Are there more HTML5 applications? So modeling, provisioning, reporting. This is what you will project us as a HANA modeler or HANA developer. And within the data provisioning, I would prefer saying you work on SLT, BODS. Uh, don't say DXC because if you use DXC. It involves SAP applications. It involves SAP applications. So DXC will make sense more for people from BW Hana background who understands um, the SAP applications. Yeah. And here for BW Hana, you can also project about data provisioning. You should say. You have leverage this along with BW ETL means BW extraction and provisioning both. Say SLT or BODS. Okay. This should be your part. So generally, any interview they would generally ask you, okay, you worked on Hana. So basically, the profile is selected just purely on Hana job. Then they say you worked on Hana. So. What is that you have done? So depending on your profile, uh, depending on what you've been focusing on, you project this person. And in both the case, scripting will be an added advantage always. Your project here, both here. Yeah. 
So this is what you would say. Okay. Mm. So as part of HANA experience, you would say I was involved in implementing scripting using stored procedures or the calculation with scripting based and involved in modeling or migrations or, or uh, not ex explicitly on composite providers with BW on HANA and design studio reporting and the ETL part. This is what your project was. Okay, was Then you would start getting, that's how the introduction happens and then the next would be on the, then it starts getting into each of this, okay. Modeling, yeah. So now mod, you, when you say modeling, so even if you search for questions, majorly they would say, what kind of HANA models do we have? So what, what is it, you'd say, attribute view, analytical view and calculation view. So in calculation view, can we can I create scripting based calculation view? You say yes. Okay, good. Now, <clears throat> so they might ask you what is attribute view, what is analytical view, and what is calculation view. They would expect an overview on each of the view, what is what. So next, the questioning could be on um, what is the difference between input parameter and variables. Yeah. Um, and then what are the different kind, so what is the input, param input parameter will make basically parameterize view, but variables are just used for filtering after the view is executed, it ex applies the filters. So would you, then the question is, would you prefer input parameter or variable was? I would say I would prefer input parameter, okay? because it, it improves my performance. Let's say I would like to filter on some country. While reading data from the table itself, I can apply my input parameter. If not, if I use variable after the execution of the view, then the filter is applied. Yeah, that's how we are got explained. The next, they would uh, ask you on. Uh, uh, sir, yeah, in you worked on calculation views. Yes, then they would say, what are the different kind of operations do we have in the calculation? View? So we have aggregation, projection, join, union, yeah, and then rank operation also. Okay. Then they would ask, okay, they ask you what is the difference between aggregation and projection, and join and union. Then they there would be a discussion on. <coughs> then from here, from these functions, if it's really strong. You get into SQL fun SQL window functions. Also. You remember about Windows functions, rank, dense rank, yeah. Uh, where basically where you want to partition the data, then execute a function, then you go with window function, partition by order by, yeah. Um, lad, lead function, lag functions. So those are very important. Next. Uh, there is a, the, there's a question the saying when you, can we create scripting based calculation view? then you say yes then there can be two cases you might ask you what was the scenario used for cal scripting based calculation view or you would say when you're implementing the scripting based calculation view what is the temporary table by default you would have there remember while writing scripting based calculation view, what is the default table name to which you assign the result of us? Any idea? Var underscore road. Excellent. Yes. <clears throat> yeah. And then if they ask you the scenario, mm. then I would prefer doing simulate this concept of I step. When I say I step two, <coughs> let's say we had a calculation view which had some five to six input parameters. But out of this five to six, there's only one that was supposed to be given by the user. I had, I had to derive all the remaining based on this value what user gives it. So then we created a scripting based calculation view where I take it from with single input parameter and based on this parameter in the cal scripting I derive all the other five 
then from there by using the placeholder i would trick call this calculation so that was the scenario we use scripting based calculation okay boss and you can also give a scenario like there was a case where we wanted to accumulate calculations accumulate operations then i we still went to scripting based calculation boss okay then the discussion gets into so what what then the discussion gets into hana live yeah. <clears throat> so do you work on hana live says hana live is nothing but the ready made views what is been delivered so to answer this or <clears throat> what i would suggest is would say yes we work on hana live <clears throat> and even for people who want to work say some real time scenarios so this is what you have to do now see with this with all this you know the concepts now the question could be what was real time example where you worked on okay S A P. So you should plan. Uh, say in in the interviews you would project as if you worked on sales or finance or which model it is. So based on that, if you go, want to go with sales. so take care of all the sales query views you know, wherever you see a query these are my query views now just oh, just get, take some if you really would don't want to miss any interview just take some two three views from each of this model sales m purchasing m inventory all this now just get into each of this and make a complete study of this view just keep drilling in into all the views what is been made in this yeah just get in no do a complete deep study and make a doc this make a documentation for yourself and see what tables have been used what is it they are getting from each of these tables and what has been used for joining then what data are they getting in so you should make your own doc so they are using some unit of measure conversions this has to be done so at least for two three views in each model sales all this so with this you should you will be able to answer what what was the source tables you have used um what was the uh, logics of joins you have done and what tables was used so this will help you to answer those real time questions for you yeah <clears throat> what is the path for this query so now You have SAP, HBA, and then you see this ECC or CRM. You can <coughs> that's analyze. Yeah. So this depends on how much hard work you put in. You have to explore your open the view. This is a main like query would be the main views. The schedule line reporting. So you know, already pretty much if you worked on BW, you know some tables. So you just drill in. So this is where you get to see, you get more knowledge on the data dictionary was completely, which table holds what information. Yeah. This you have to do. Okay. Then SQL, you have to be really stuck. Basically, it's about let's see. Don't worry about all. Like, in select, insert. update delete truncate load unload delta merging try to focus on this one 
and still there is some in some interviews there is discussion on column store table about main delta how it helps you how it handles the performance and all those stuff yeah but no one is interested in knowing uh, how to alter a table this is the main data manipulations which we generally use it a lot might be they are may ask you about stored procedure syntax because there are some interviews where they are asking them to write on the board stored procedure syntax so i think pretty much if you can cover these two you handle pret and they ask you the engines yeah. um so for each of the view what engine is leveraged so for attribute it will be join engine for analytical it will be olap engine for calculus it will be uh calculus engine so they will ask you when i use analytical view to calculus view then what engines are used will it use both olap as well as calculus or, or calculus engines? so when include analytical view into calculus view all definitions of analytical view is put into calculus view so everything gets executed with calculus view only yeah? and then very important about joins they'll discuss on compulsory referential and versus similar okay referential and inner join so in case of referential the join is executed only with olap engine and when the join is performed it performs an inner join and join is also executed only when the data is read right from both the tables if you just read only from the left table there is no join executed yeah it's very important then pretty much this is the word uh, they might deal with modeling was yeah and mm -hmm. and then uh, variables and input parameters and they'll raise a discussion on sysbic and time generation okay then cal view to scripting can i convert graphical calculation view into scripting based yes from scripting to graphical also either way okay mm. this is what pretty much on modeling and they would ask you about join types and data foundation semantics and some stuff but those are okay then the major discussion goes on the sl tables work on sl yes but tell them clearly sl t was not leveraged to replicate all uh, data in all the cases tell them we had used slt to replicate data in only cases where it was expected to have the data in the real time only for all others we just if it is bw or hana you can see we have used bw extraction mechanisms if it is you want to project a project without bw then say we have used bods to replicate but if only in the case where we wanted to have real time replication of data then you will say slt yeah? then they'll ask you about load and load stop replicate suspend resume all this but they would not but when they say you know what configure this say you know configuration but don't tell them you've done this because in the ltr the configuration is generally done by the basis and main thing on the ltrc and configuration all the uh, transformations ltrs or if it is latest if it is old iuc underscore repl underscore mm, content was very important so can i use abap programs to do transformations yes So if you want, you can include the line of code there, which is of max 72 length, or you can create and include programs. Remember that. I think pretty much is fine. Uh, um, what what are, then they might expect? What are the tables which it replicates by default? Remember DD02 LN DD02 T. It is zero eight. 
and then they would ask you what are the standard tables in in the SLT schema. You remember about RS order, RS log. RS order is the important one. You should know. This. Okay, mm. that's about. So can SLT through using SLT can we replicate data from a non-SAP or non-SAP both? Yes. And when it comes to BODs, if you really start, see, I've sent you the document also. If you want to really project BODs, you can project. If not, you can say. I was an Ahana consultant coordinating with the BO con BODs. I was an Ahana consultant. Um, <clears throat> majorly, I was interacting with the BODs, but I have knowledge on BODs, and you can just project about all this. I think in yesterday's, I have sent you this document. This complete cookbook on BODs. If you can go through this and make sure you do this, I think you pretty much strong. You can handle anything from this. Okay. But if you want, but don't waste time in trying to become expert and then you are not earning any do no. You can just keep this saying. See, they don't. You are not expected to be strong in everything. Okay. You can just say I am just coordinate with the BODs consultant and I understand their vocabulary. Then that's enough. Yeah. But if you want to say yes, I have some knowledge and then project it and then do that. That's it. Okay. And then reporting part, try to focus on this design studio. Majorly on design studio. So when you see work done design studio, they say yes, that's all. There's nothing to ask you on that. There's nothing much to ask you on the design studio or WebB or whatever it is. Much. So majorly, majorly they'll test you more on scripting and modeling because they. There is nothing much ask you on the reporting side or the ETL part. Okay? So majority of the time, it will be majorly on modeling and scripting. So if you can really plan well, I think you can break any interview bus. Okay, any interview you can break. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. And then uh, resumes, I'll basically send it out. See, but but. Knowing this, this is what expected. You can basically have your own points. I'm saying I was involved in creating my cal uh, models for calculation with scripting based and cal uh, graphical based, analytical views, attribute views. I can say involved in implementing complex scripting with stored procedures. Yeah, uh, involved in creating reports, involved in setting up the SLT, involved in building up the BODS data flow jobs, triggering to load into HANA. That's how you have to get in. But okay, and then I was involved in I was part of uh, HANA DB migration for BW, then optimizations. So you can go that way. So depending on how you want to project HANA live, do we have any scenario based on this? Yeah, there was a project we we did like this. We had BW. Anna. There was ECC and then we replicated all the tables from ECC to HANA then implemented HANA live here because general HANA live requires the ECC tables if it is HANA live for ECC it would require ECC tables so we replicate those tables into HANA then implemented HANA live in HANA database of BW and we expose this for report okay. and then interview they will ask like what are the third situations you faced in your project and how did you handle uh, this uh, <clears throat> see this and one general type of question you get is like this is very frequent what is HANA <coughs> and how do you <coughs> propose a customer to implement 
so it can go in different ways right it can go as enterprise hana or bw or hana or ecc or hana so this will be the question what <coughs> Uh, how do you provide a solution to the customers to implement HANA? Generally, in the manager in, in the second round or something, you get to this, you face these kind of questions. But this is very important. Because actually, you should have an idea. Remember, in the initial classes I explained to you, if there's a customer who's got BW, see, <coughs> SAP is going in this way. If the customer, if it's a small customer, he wants to implement data over us, then it will be BODS, IQ, BO for reporting. Yeah? If it is uh, with real time reporting and they want to have in memory solution, then they go with BODS, HANA, then BO reporting. Or if the data is really huge and they want to build, if they already have BW and they want to use a leverage, then, then it will be BW or HANA. And then do reporting with you. It will be like this. This is what you got for it. So huge data, then you can go with these two options. If it's small data, then they can go with this option. Okay? That's what you got to project in. Or you can also project as so if there's a single customer only with ECC and doesn't want to in, then you need not go to this, you can just go with you can have ECC application running on HANA database and leverage HANA live within the ECC system. And then do reporting. You also do this way. You can say you'll have ECC application running with HANA. So my customer has got only ECC, nothing else. So yeah, I migrate this ECC to, to HANA. Then all my ECC tables will be in the underlying HANA. So I set up HANA line. So based on the user requirements, we had created a copy of those ready-made views and changed it a little bit. And then we did reporting on this without BW. We were reporting on HANA line. So this also could be one kind of project you can project in. If you're projecting a simple customer, so this could be a solution where ECC power it with HANA, then then you leverage HANA live onto it, then do reporting on top of it, okay? Yes, sir, one question, so... This uh, is yeah. yeah. Uh, so basically, uh, many people uh, talk about the what is native HANA, right? So, so as far as you told us what is native HANA, if you are using the native framework, yeah, of yeah. Uh, a front end, a service, and a database, <coughs> then it is native HANA, and whatever you use in UI5 or Vodata, it, it's all native HANA. But but when we are doing modeling with views, yeah, is that not called as a native HANA development? Then they refer it as uh, enterprise HANA because modeling can be done in native HANA as well as this also. But generally they use this terminology as enterprise HANA. Okay. But still, in the market, because when you get calls from the companies, yeah, who's calling you for the clarification? HR HR team is calling you. They don't know what is BW HANA. They don't know what is native HANA. They don't know what is enterprise HANA. Okay? Right. You should say yes, yes for everything what they ask. Then deal with it. The then deal with the technical person. That's all. Okay. Uh, it's for my clarification. Uh, yeah, and sir, and sir, but I face, I face this problem because <clears throat> when I yeah. when I get some call from HR, I used to take them one hour session to them. Because they say, do you know HANA? Then, then I should tell them, well, what part of HANA do you want? Do you want HANA administration or do you want HANA model? Do you want HANA development or native development? Which one do you want? No, we want HANA this year. Then I explain them what is all this. Then ask them what do you want okay instead of doing that you just say hana and yes hana then we can deal with the interview a technical person he understands it right so that's better yeah yeah and uh, remember about schema mapping yeah delivery units hana native transports transport containers mm. and then what else and HANA is small, it's not so vast topic like BW. This is 
you can handle it easily and column store row store views procedures that's fine yeah mm -hmm. Uh, data reconciliation how we are doing you know, if you are different source systems how we are validating if any record is missing in Hana you mean reconciliation reconciliation Adenapa. what is the case do you have BW or Hana or normal Hana what is it SAP ECC uh -huh. and non SAP SAP ECC is your source. Yes, sir. and non SAP also. And you're loading it to source. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Non SAP. Okay. And loading to Hana. Okay. On top of we are doing reporting. Okay. So they are asking some of the information from ECC is matching. Some of the information from non ECP we are getting not matching with the source system which is there in non SAP. Okay. So how we need yes. to rectify that? See there's no there's no automatic procedure to do that. Okay. You want to really automate that one way is like you can refer this non SAP table in HANA through smart data access as a virtual table. Mm -hmm. And you have a physical table which is loaded in HANA. You can have a physical table and you can have a virtual table and create a view on this or a report on this which will say value from virtual table value from physical table so both these two values should match then you will say the report is correct okay 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 mm -hmm. Okay, sir. Yeah. Uh, what if I have a database? I mean, uh, the source is uh, uh, DB2, and I am trying to use HANA on top of it and do reporting. Mm -hmm. So then, from DB2, you'll be basically using BODS and loading into HANA. Then you'll be doing reporting on BO. Yeah. Because now logically, I'm telling you, say. Easy other question. Say he's got DB2 system, okay, with all the data. Now I would like to implement a data warehousing on this, yeah. And he say DB2 has got huge data, okay. Yes. So it was very very important. How do we do solutioning? Now there are three options. One is I can you go with B, just BW, BW or HANA, or just Core HANA or IQ. I can go with either of the solutions, right? Now. Is the customer says the data is huge, okay. System, the data is huge. So then I will not prefer IQ when the data is really huge, okay. So options would be either BW or HANA or BW or HANA. Then even if I use BW in this case, because BW will be BW is rich in business content, and that makes sense when you're using SAP as a source. But here, since my source is DB2, which will be normal tables. So I will not be able to leverage the standard content of BW. Then there is no point in going to BW. Then I will say, let us implement core HANA okay, as a database. And on top of it, we will go with BO report. This is, will be your solution. Okay, boss? If you say, why are you not using BW? Then there is no point in setting up BW because when I am not using business content. And um, yeah. so I can just use HANA in this case. Yeah? Yeah, in if uh, if this is the case, and if I want to extract real time data on top of that, I can use SLT. Also. Exactly, I can use in the, as a middle I can use SLT in case of real time data required. Be what this in batch mode. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah. yeah. If it is flat file, so then it is as usual that. Yeah, flat file also can be extracted through be what this, right? Yeah. 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 Got it. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah. <coughs> see, uh, so basically, now what? What? Uh, see, when you when you go, when you handle the real time cases, uh, interview, when you say I want to have some real time scenarios, if you take the source as ECC, 
okay and you take some application from its sd or mm or pp if you really don't know those tables you're caught okay let's see you say you have done modeling on sd application then straight away i put a question saying what are the tables did you use okay if you're able to list if you already planned this hana live and if you practiced on, as i told you about two three views if you already made a study on it you'll be able to list out the tables until you say stop we can start listing in the, all the tables we back we view pk never lf all this one so to come out of the this risk okay i would suggest preferable to say work with non sa so when i immediately start saying non sap sin work with non sap you can choose any application you are comfortable with sales or mm or whatever it is so immediately as soon as i say non sap will you ask me what what tables did you use look at the logic first will you ask, will you ask me what are the tables so i'm telling this is a simple way of handling the real time questions okay if you say my source is non sap immediately you are out of that question saying what tables did you use that is where you have to play okay so so even if i ask you what was the currency conversion table you can say nik mind ke edu sa jeppochu z y c u r underscore t underscore i 120 will there be some problem no right but if you say sap you have to be on on dot check t ker t ker c t ker f so people who are not people who are not from a real time background but if you really want to project that you are real time this is the case easy case to handle say non sap data hana and then bureau report getting this what i'm saying so you don't have to worry about scenario scenarios or plan things just if it is ecc then be comfortable on this hana live if you don't want really waste time on this because there's no point if you, with this you understand modeling but if, if tomorrow if there's new tables then you got to redo the entire logic so preferably say non sap then don't waste time in remember mugging up all the table names give it the concept be with this then you're easy to handle a break any interview so that's the way you should handle it. okay uh Yes, sir yeah sir uh, i just have one general question uh, for example uh, if a guy belongs to some uh, telecommunication or yeah. Uh, banking or yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah will that will that be any i mean yeah. Ad- advantage right you project that saying saying you say i my source is db2 slt bod is hana and then you do a bio report then they ask the, the next say extreme case you should think on what reports did you develop yeah Yeah. So from a telecom background, you know what kind of reports they expect. You list out those tables. Then they say, how was this report delivered? We had so and so tables. This was what modeling we have done. This report we plan like that. So plan some yes. five to six reports. Uh, plan what tables have been leveraged. What modeling was done on those tables, and how these reports were delivered. That's all. From end to end, yeah. Okay. So the. I mean, what I am asking is, for example, if I am going for an interview, I am a banking guy. Yeah. The other guy who interviews me belongs to some kind of te- uh, insurance or telecommunication yeah. or uh, uh, yeah, yeah, some retail or something else. Yeah, yeah. That they expect me to. to no, 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 no. In that case, uh, as soon as you say uh, telecommunication, he will not ask you any questions on function. He will start asking you questions technically only. So those are rare domains telecom insurance when you say you are coming from those domains immediately you start asking you technically you not touch anything on the functional part okay so that will not be i mean disadvantage right no that is an advantage for you because you know some domain which no one knows so it is an advantage <laughs> narayana please be loud uh yeah um. yeah Yes. So any, I think with this you can handle any interview bus very easily. Okay, nothing much. In anyone attended any interviews already? 
Okay, sir. Uh, are uh, there yeah, any uh, reports available? Are there which we can look into? Uh, are there any reports available already in the system which we can look into? You do not have the reports, but I can help you in this. Way. If you go to this. so, if you are from non-SAP background, <coughs> if you really want to know the reports, just get into this technology platform. Yeah? You get into the BW part of it. Uh, click on NetViewer here and say BI content. Just get into any of this here and click on English. And then you get into BI content. Expand this. And then choose, uh, there will be something ERP central component. You choose your functional area. Uh, SRM or CRM or something. Let me just and for BW HANA, just BW or HANA, just go through this HANA optimized BI content. Uh, if you just get into ERP central component, the logistics or HR, finance, which one do you want? Your logistics, uh, if you want to get into some manufacturing or order fulfillment, inventory management or sales, there is something that queries. There is a lot of queries. Each of them are reports. It is building documents. Like one kind of a report. See, just, just take what does what KPIs are there. Like knowing number of invoiced items, invoiced quantities, invoice, let's say of the invoice. This is what you got to pick up. Just the list of some queries or reports. Okay, boss. And okay, sir. Uh, how can we project this HANA into our resume? Is yes, because we have not worked on HANA and we have to project that we have worked. So that's what I was telling you, right? So how do you no, that is okay for the interview. And uh, that is okay from the interview point of view. I'm asking how to just present it in the resume. Means like what to be the points, huh? Huh? I mean, okay, say for example, I'm holding experience of five years. Okay. So is it like I'm working in ABAP? Mm -hmm. So is it like I can say that I have worked in ABAP for three years and HANA for two years? Yeah, that's all. Or okay. I was moved internally into some uh, into HANA project? Yeah, you should say like this, you got, so you're from ABAP with background, right? So then you say three years ABAP and then two years HANA. Then you should project as if since you've been working on HABAP and you have uh, more knowledge on the data dictionary of ECC, they have considered uh -huh. me into this HANA project and from there I picked on to HANA. That's what you got to present. Yeah. Then, when you're projecting that case, you have to be really strong with the ECC DDIC, uh, data dictionary. Okay? Okay. So then you got to focus more on the list of the tables. You got to speak more on the tables then. Okay? Okay. So then, so you will say, as since I've been an ABAPR and I understand more on the data dictionary from ECC, I had an opportunity to be put onto a HANA projects, and then that's where I started my career onto HANA from two years, two years back. And basically, I dealt with sales and finance models, and and that's it. Then they start asking if I am the, I am interviewing you. When you project this, I would ask you, okay, just list me what tables did you use in HANA model from ECC. Hmm. Then you should to justify this point that you worked three years on a map and you're really strong on the DPAC part. You should be able to list me out tables until I stop you. Okay. Yeah. Then from once okay, you ask me that question, so I'm confirmed that you are true on your you, you are an ABAPR and you're strong at the table level. You know what tables are there, which information is stored in what tables, yeah. Okay. Because modeling is very easy, uh, drag and drop all this. But modeling becomes difficult when you when you don't understand the data. Uh, until unless we are not comfortable with the tables, we will not then, be able to take. And, and that is the advantage you have now. When you say you're a mapper and you have an easy to get dictionary knowledge, you know hmm. the tables we back maybe say if it says sales, you say we back maybe. BBP, BBUP, LIPS, LIKP, BRK, BRK. Yeah. And then the KNA1, 
Mara, Mard, Mark. So you got uh-huh. to get those tables. So that makes so when you know the table and you know what which table holds what information. Like uh-huh. the selling price of an article A nine zero one and uh, yeah. So this could be one simple scenario. Like I want to get the selling price of an article. So we need modeling. So we use A nine zero one and A O N P table. A A nine zero one will give me. For an article on the sales work, which gives me the con- pricing condition. So you are not audible. Yeah, from A nine zero one table, I can pick up. Uh, now can you hear me? Yes, yes. So I have got A nine zero one from this from the sales work specific for an article. It does give me the pricing condition. I go to K O N P table and get the pricing from here. So this could be on a scenario for modeling your selling price of an article. I would like to have a purchasing price. Uh, say not specific. I want to see the purchasing price which is specific to vendor material. Vendor at uh, vendor material. Let's say A zero eight one, and I join this with K O N P and get this because of the specific material pricing. Yeah, this is what you have to start planning. Uh, that that should help you. If you are projecting as a paper, this is what it comes in. Okay. This is one. And basically, uh, basically, while preparing the resume, is that I need to focus more and more on Hana and get reduced on this uh, a website. Project more uh, two years uh, project on Hana, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. When in, in this two years project more on Hana itself, yeah? Hana modeling and provisioning all this. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Sir, SLT is using real time. So, if you are using as an ABAP, we should also project on this ABAP managed database process. No, sorry, did not get you, sir. ABAP managed database processes. Okay. You remember other day I showed you something on the class and creating a method of HDB procedure. Remember? Yes, yes, yes. Ah, uh, you got to project that. Where can I get the rapid marts for Hana? Rapid marts. I am using HP in ninety-six division. Others, I am using ninety-six division. Now, uh, if they ask, don't get into ninety-six. Just get into uh, just be with SP seven or SP eight. Don't get SP not in SP seven or SP eight. If they ask you which version of Hana, don't get in nine and ten bus. You as well as not gone to that level. It's still a seven and eight. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So one second. I have this question. This ABAP managed database procedure is it related to that uh, stored procedure? Yeah, yeah. Creating or in this? Now we remember about the that, class, no? the class and we created we made yes. the method as a procedure and writing scripting into. It. Yes. Yeah, that's all. Okay. But for that, you have to use ABAP perspective in Eclipse. Okay? Hmm. Rapid data mart. So, would you mind showing me the screen? I'm just getting confused. Just only the screen which you are talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one. Uh, I just wanted to see the screen for this uh, ABAP managed database procedure. Yeah. Just only the screen. This is our. This is our. Okay. 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 Rapid March. That will be solution. How are you? Just get it. Thank <laughs> you. 
Look at this, Savar asked me about RTS now. So rapid data load for high breeze, uh, predict analytics, unaccelerated finance, yeah? finance and controlling if you get in. Mm -hmm. So which is one, uh, ERP profitable analysis accelerator, you just get in. Just mm. start giving some insights and get this out. Okay, this will be a zip file. Just download this. Okay, like this you can see all the accelerators, RDS, rapid deployment, which can speed up for BW and HANA. You'll have some out of this. You have some concept of migration of BW to HANA, IQ NLS retention, and how do you adapt? And just get into this and then look at this, yeah. Suit so, on Hana is like ECC or Hana. You'll have this Hana live or something. Ah, see, there's something called Hana live. Hana live reports or Hana live applications. We'll take you to the download where you can download that HANA live. So this is my HANA live RDS. Just click on this. That's where you can go through that RDS. So this is the URL. I can just ping through RDS. When it's RDS, rapid deployment solutions which can basically speed up your implementation. Mm, something about analytics here. Yeah. See, there's some concept called text analytics. HANA also supports text analytics where you can basically process unstructured data. I used to teach it before, but I see no one is really asking on this. So, but if you want some information on this, if you go to YouTube, say SAP, HANA, text analysis, okay. If you go to text analysis, you see, text analysis, text mining. Now just get, this will tell you about full text index and then how do we create manual index and just go through this, that should be enough. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And this is it. Uh, if it is profiles, I think Pawan will be sending some profiles to you. Just go, don't copy the same point, just go through the profiles, read through, then based on that formulate your points. Things should be okay from there. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Sir, if you are implementing BODS, what is the minimum time gap that uh, transaction data to reflect in reporting? Is it 30 uh, minutes you can leverage uh, that one or is there any time limit is there? No, 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 we will not, see, you know, even simple loading from BODS, we will not be loading every, for every 30 minutes, we will not load, no? Generally, okay, if you data, you data, data, data versing will always say, one day old, always, okay? So, what are the data we see today, is only of reflecting till yesterday's day, always. But if there's some exceptional cases, then I can schedule the real-time jobs through SLT or even BODS, if it is IDOX, I can do that, yeah? Yeah. Okay. So you need to say minimum one day time gap need to be there if you want to schedule the BODS job, right? And the other point, because even if you if you try to schedule 30 minutes every 30 minutes, you'll have it's, it's not one load, right? Because you'll have a lot of it'll have a very big batch cycle which will run for almost for 
eight hours, nine hours, ten hours. So can you schedule this batch okay. over this ten hours uh, batch for ten hours in every thirty minutes? How will you do? Yeah. I mean, uh, they want only one particular report. One, one particular day. report you can do always. If the depending on data volume, if it is one report, okay. you say how much time does it take for the refresh of the data? If it takes one hour, then you will say for every two hours I can do a, give you a refresh. Yeah, that's how it is. So if the job which okay. refresh the that report just takes five minutes, I can say every every ten minutes you'll have a refresh date. I can say, yeah. Uh, I have I attend one interview. They are asking some of the questions. Can I? Yeah, yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, first question he is asking when uh, activating Hana view. BW on HANA is there, when you are activating business contact, it is giving errors. So what is the possible is errors it? we are seeing? Internet. Hello? Sorry, sorry. What is it? You implemented SAP delivered business content on HANA. When you try to activate the business content, activation is failing. No, first, so what is the possible reasons? Is it business content for BW on HANA or normal HANA? BW on HANA. BW on HANA. Uh, so, you, Mike, what I understand from your question is you are saying you have got BW on HANA, you are activating some business current which is supposed to create HANA view and it is failing up, right? Yes, exactly, sir. Mm, basically, when you work on BW on HANA, the major issues you would have is, yeah. Uh, but generally, if you, if you throw me an error like that, I can't give you a perfect answer, but go to status. We need to go to first thing, first okay. thing you should say, this is the owner, okay? Mm -hmm. When you activate a business content in BW, if it has to create a view, this user should give this user should have access to those views or to the packages. Okay. Okay. So first thing is this user should be given the necessary authorizations which is getting connected to HANA from the BW part. Then when you create a queue, then underlying view can be created in the HANA database using this user. Because whenever it is creating HANA user, HANA models on the activation okay. of the BW cubes, it is created from this this user bus. So, so this user should be given the respect to access. Okay, that is one. Okay, there is one more uh, issues also. Uh, say when you are installing some business content, it expects say for example you are installing advanced DSO, it expects mm -hmm. have some business content in public like uh, zero zero pack ID, zero RSOR ID. Some so there is some business content information must be there. Okay. Okay. So generally, when you install, you get a uh, error like you get a dump RS. Uh, sorry, sir, not RS. Sorry, sir. RS four is for installing business content, but uh, so if you go to ST twenty two, yeah, you get this dumps in the okay. exception in the hard security. Yeah. Generally, you get a dump like this, right? Yeah. Uh, I would say, but I don't have this. I don't know where is this dumps, but it raises it raises an exception when you try to install some business content, and if it doesn't find does not find some of the objects what is required, it raises a business content error. Yeah. So then, what you do generally is, um, but I don't know this, but I do this way. See, this is the line of code which is raised in exception, so that would trigger from this the below program. So I just get into below program, and we insert a breakpoint here, and then try doing the same operation, and then you will find for which provider the problem is or which object the problem is. Then install those dependent business objects, and then handle that. Okay. So two cases: missing out some business kind of dependency business kind of info objects, or the not proper operations for the the BW HANA user. Yeah. Okay. And also possible cases there uh, schema mapping is also maybe chance right sir? No, no, no. schema mapping this have got no no dependency. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. 
So what are the features are available in uh, I mean uh, HANA provision and all, the, all those things once database is there HANA database only then those features are available in PWR right sir if it is Oracle those features are not available right which one I mean uh, we have uh, in ODS if you are creating HANA views external HANA views yeah, yeah, yeah. is there right those all options are only when you have HANA not others yeah, yeah. okay so they want to convert BW on HANA, initially they need to migrate a database, then they need, they need to plan for uh, flows, right? Exactly, exactly. Like that way? Exactly. Yeah. So 3.x to 7.x, 7.x to remaining flows, right sir? That is the procedure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'll stop it here. Now all the best boss and sir? yeah. Sir. Yeah. Hello? Yeah, yeah. Hello. Sir, by any chance, do you have any kind of recording or <coughs> uh, presentation or some reporting? Kind of where, uh, uh, not reporting. Uh, uh, let me finish my question, sir. Yeah. Uh, where you handle, uh, I mean, uh, the Hadoop or unstructured data that we uh, that I was since asking because uh, yeah. we have one yeah. project running in our, uh, 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 with our client. So uh, where? they have implemented Hadoop and they wanted to do some uh, predictive analytics on their applications. See here, so we have this SAP HANA Smart Data Access Hadoop. See, these ones here. All these are relevant to integration of Hadoop and HANA. Yeah? Just go through this video, just max half an hour, one hour, that's it. Okay, boss? Okay, sir. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. You have that loading of data from, loading data into Hadoop, and then you get, you access that through Smart Data. It gives you from the start how to set up uh, Hadoop, and then how to access it, and all those. Okay? Yeah. Thank you, sir. No special configurations. Once you have Hadoop and then start integrating it through Smart Data Access directly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Fine, boss. Thank you. And all the best, boss. Okay. Bye. Thank you.